This is Geometry Unit 10, Lesson 5 on Proving Quadrilaterals Are Parallelograms. Now, the qu Proving Quadrilaterals Are Parallelograms is based on the properties of parallelograms. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then we should know all six of these things. Opposite sides are parallel. That's the definition. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. The consecutive or angles next to each other are supplementary. The diagonals bisect each other. And also divide the a parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So those are the six properties. The first five properties are the ones we use most often. So the five ways to prove a quadrilateral parallelogram is by proving these five things. Okay, and they're based on here. If you can prove that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that's the definition of a parallelogram. So that would be that. You can also prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. If you can prove that's true, then it would be a parallelogram. Okay, now there's a special one here. If you can prove that one pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. And there's a reason for that, which we'll talk about later. And if you can prove both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, and that the diagonals bisect each other. If you can prove any of these things, you can say that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And they're based on proving of the properties of the parallelogram, except for this one, and there's a reason why it's this one. But these three, the first three, are the ones that are used most often, and number five is used a lot. Opposite angles, not so much. But occasionally it is. Okay, so of these five ways, we have to figure out if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's take a look. We are given quadrilateral ABCD, where angle A is congruent to angle C, and angle D and angle B are congruent. Okay, is this a parallelogram? Well, if we look at our list of our properties here, here's our properties, and here is our five ways. What do we have on that? We have opposite angles. Are both pairs of opposite angles congruent? Well, there's my picture. A is congruent to C and B is congruent to D. So is this a parallelogram? Yes because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Of opposite angles, I'm sorry. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So since these A is congruent to C and B is congruent to D, that would make this a parallelogram. So A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. So both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So we are given this time that A is greater than B. Um, the reason that A is greater than B is so that if I have put in a value for side here, if A isn't greater than B, then that, won't that be a negative length? Yeah, so all that's telling you is that um, the sides are going to be positive. That's A has to be greater than B. So we're not worried about that. So let's take a look at what we have here. We have um, this angle and this angle are both 25. What kind of angles are those? They're ultra interior angles and they're congruent. So what does that give you? That means that the lines are parallel. Because the ultra interior angles are congruent, that means that AB is parallel to CD because alternate interior angles are congruent. So I've got one pair of sides parallel. Now, I also have A, B, and C, D marked with a different length. One of our properties, remember, is if we can prove that one pair of sides is both congruent and parallel, then we can say that it's parallelogram. Well, we already proved it's parallel. Let's see if we can prove it's congruent. Well, we know A, B is equal to A squared minus B squared. 
Well, isn't that a difference of squares? Doesn't that factor as a plus b, a minus b? And then we have cd is equal to a plus b, a minus b. What do we notice here? These two right here are congruent. So that means that ab is congruent to cd. They have the same measure. So that means this is a parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel. It has to be both of them, congruent and parallel. So if you can prove that a pair of opposite sides are both congruent and parallel, you can say that this is a parallelogram. So A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. All right, so let's look at this next one. We are given on this one that x is greater than negative 3. Now, why would x have to be greater than negative 3? Well, if I put negative 3 in here, what's that going to give you for a side? It's going to give you a side of 0. So if x has got to be greater than negative 3, that's just telling you so you don't have a side of 0 and so you have a positive side. So knowing about that, let's see what we can prove. Okay? Well, let's look what we have here. We have a, b, and c, d are opposite sides. Are they congruent? Well, let's see. a, b is 1 half times x plus 3. Now, if I distribute the 1 half through here, I get x over 2 plus 3 over 2, which I can combine because they're common denominator, x plus 3 over 2. Okay, and then cd is x plus 3 over 2. So that means that ab is congruent to cd. Okay. So we know this is congruent to this. All right, now the other thing that we have is this 40 degree angle here and the 40 degree angle here. Now obviously those angles are congruent, and what kind of angles would they be? They'd be alternate interior angles. So what lines would be parallel? Well, AD would be parallel to BC because these are the alternate interior angles for these two sides. So we would say AD is parallel to BC because alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so is this a parallelogram? We proved this opposite sides are congruent and this opposite sides are parallel. Is this a parallelogram? Well, according to our list that we have, we don't know. So from the work we have, we, we have to say we don't know. So this would be don't, we don't know because one pair of sides is congruent, but the other pair is parallel. We don't know if one is both. Other sides are parallel. Okay. Um, so the same pair of sides is not congruent or par congruent and parallel. So we can't say, oops, same pair of sides. The same pair of sides is not congruent and parallel. So they might be, we don't know, but we don't have enough information. So from the information that we have right now, it is not a parallelogram without more info. So it's not a parallelogram right now. Now, if we could somehow prove that AD and BC were congruent, we'd be all set because both sides would be congruent. Or if we could say, prove that these two angles were congruent, but we don't know that. We don't have enough information. Okay, one more. All right, for the last one, we want to know if this is a parallelogram. So we're dealing with the diagonals on this. So um, until we know what the length of the diagonals are, we can't figure out what, uh, if this is a parallelogram or not. So we need to know what x is for this problem. Now, do we know anything about x? Well, we have these two angles right here marked are uh, those angles. Do we know anything about those two angles right there with these lines intersecting? This angle and this angle, what do we know about them? By vertical angles. They're vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. So that means that 20 over 3 x minus 10 equals 4x plus 2. Okay, now I don't like the fraction there, so I'm going to multiply through by 3 to get rid of my fraction. 
multiply by 3, multiply by 3, make sure you distribute. 3 times 20 over 3 just gives you 20x minus 30 is equal to distribute here, 12x plus 6. All right, subtract so the 12, you get 8x minus 30 is equal to 6. Add the 30, you get 8x equals 36. Divide by 8, and you get x is equal to 4.5. All right, so now that I know that this is x is 4.5, I can fill in my values. All right, so that gives me, I'm going to put a point E here so you know which one I'm talking about. All right, so AE right here, this one right here will be 4.5 plus 1 is 5.5. So AE is 5.5. All right, and CE over here would be 2 times 4.5 minus 4, which would be 9 minus 4, which is uh, 5. All right, so EC is 5. All right, and then DE is X squared minus 13. X 4.5 squared minus 13 is 7.25. Take my word for it. This is 7.25. That's a 7. And then EB is 3 times x minus 3. 3 times 4.5 minus 3 is 10.5. Okay, so these are the pieces of the diagonals that intersect at E. Uh, is this a parallelogram? Or what's supposed to happen with a parallelogram? The diagonals are supposed to bisect each other. So if I look at these two right here, AE and EC, do these bisect each other? No, they don't. AE does not equal EC, and DE does not, is not congruent to um, EB. So the diagonals do not bisect each other. So ABCD is not a parallelogram. Even though it kind of looks like one, based on our information from the values that we have, it is not a parallelogram because the diagonals do not bisect each other. Okay, so your properties have to work. So you either have to prove both pairs of opposite sides parallel, both pairs of opposite sides congruent, one pair congruent and parallel, or uh, the diagonals bisect each other, or both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. That's the only way that you can prove those. So of the properties of the parallelograms, you have to have all of those different ways to prove. 